Hi. So during the night, at some point, we had an elk visiting. Actually, we had more than one, but one showed up on its on the security camera that I have outside. <clears throat> and I could hear them as I was looking at the video uh, before I saw them. And then when I did see the one, it, it came over to my hot tub and sniffed it, looked like it licked it. Later this morning, I was in my hot tub, and my wife and I, and just relaxing and enjoying, and I got thinking about that elk, and I thought about, well, what scripture says about the animals, the birds in the sky, and the flowers in the field, and how, well, how they don't worry. They don't get concerned about the political climate or whatever else is going on in our world. And that brought me to the idea of faith, and chapter 11 of Hebrews talks a lot about faith. And partly what I want to look at today is the idea of the faith side that we don't look at too much. The first 32 verses of uh, chapter 11 of Hebrews talks about the wonderful faith of just different people whose lives were dramatically affected because of faith. And, and that's awesome, and that's wonderful. But then it talks about others who experienced different things because of faith. I mean, it says that people, because of faith, overthrew kingdoms and ruled with justice. But then it says, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. They placed hope in a better life. Some were jeered. Some had their backs cut open. Some were put in chains. And still some and others died by stoning, and some were even sawed in half. We don't think about that part of faith so much. We think about the good part. But the reality is, if you're going to trust God, there may be difficult parts of your faith and your walk of faith that were going to be very difficult to walk through. But God is going to be there. And that's the point I think we have to remember. I think there's too much uh, trying to preserve and to take care of ourselves and not relying on God and his direction. I know some who are hoarding cash and other things because, well, because they believe that the coming apocalypse is going to be their demise. Well, maybe it will be. But I don't know is that what God is calling us to do because if I'm going to hoard and let my neighbors suffer and die because of their lack, then what am I really doing? I think the challenge for those that are followers of Christ is to walk in a manner that faith is exhibited no matter what we're going through. Think about that today, would you? Until next time, God bless.